Um, this event is organized by the principal's office in collaboration with the Office of Counseling, Career Guidance, and Community Life. And the idea behind it was that we wanted to provide a space for our parents, our community, to have resources provided to them regularly and to be able to ask questions related to the safety of their children, to their children's well-being, their children's upbringing. So in the past, we've had topics on cyber safety um, or digital citizenship, if you will. We've had topics on anxiety separating from your children. We've discussed just your child's personality, how to ensure their success. Um, and today, we're going to be focusing more on, on the safety side of things. So we're going to be focusing on police and civilians, the law and your rights. I'm excited to hear about this because I'll tell you, it got to a point where when I realized the police was coming to stop me, I didn't want to stop because I just felt I wasn't sure what exactly would happen. Would they take my license? Would I have to go to the station? Would I have to give some money? So I'm excited to hear about what exactly uh, our rights are. So at this point, I'll hand over to our, our safety manager. That's Mr. Richard Adetto, and he's going to introduce our guest speaker for today. Over to you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Good morning, GIS community. Uh, my name has been said already, it is Richard Adetto. I am the Security and Safety Assurance Manager of Ghana International School. Around here, our underpinnings are strongly anchored in safety. Our slogans are, think safety, work safely. And if you see something, say something. Say something. I am, honor I am really honored and privileged and thankful for the opportunity to introduce our resource person uh, for this community event um, in the person of uh, Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCOP, Miss. You don't have to show face. My only okay. Okay, I think uh, the Obapa Adubia family, maybe you have to be okay, it's muted now. Great. Thank you. All right. So um DCP, DCOP, Miss Yako Lydia Dongo, who is a committed GIS parent and a very visible and devoted community member at that. Uh, until her nomination as Director General, uh, Police Professional Standards Bureau, that's the DG BPSB, uh, she was in charge of legal and prosecutions, Accra Regional Police Command. And as the DG PPSB, uh, which is a very, very big portfolio, which includes, to say the least, uh, reports to the IGP and then a strong voice on the police management board. Uh, she's an astute lover of sports, specifically football. Yeah, and uh, she's also, she happens to be the chairperson for the police ladies uh, football club. She is also an avid follower of fashion and latest trends. She's a proud product of Wesley Girls High School, Cape Coast. She also has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Law and Political Science from the University of Ghana, Legon, and also holds a Master of Law degree from the University of Leeds. GIS community, I have the singular honor to present to you Deputy Commissioner of Police Miss Lydia Yako Donko, DCOP, your audience. Thank you, Richard, and uh, thanks for the wonderful introduction. <laughs> and uh, just for you to know, my team is playing this morning. So as soon as I'm done with the yeah, with the yeah. meeting, I have to head to the park at 10 a.m. You know, so fingers crossed for for a win today. Exactly. But thank you very much, and. Um, I'm glad for the opportunity to, to be able to speak to the GIS community once again. I think I've been to the school last year to speak to teachers and staff. 
So this time, uh, parents are going to hear what the Ghana Police Service is all about. So as we all know, we are mandated by the 1992 Constitution to perform our traditional duty of maintaining law and order, protecting lives and property, uh, preventing the commission of crime and detecting crime, in arresting people who fall foul of the law, and a host of other things. So with all of this, we have a big, big, big uh, responsibility and the authority that is given to us by the state, we are expected to exercise it properly. And when I say properly, in accordance with the law, and it's because, you know, we interact with civilians or members of the general public. And anytime you come into contact with people who are not clothed in, in authority like you, there are certain things that you would have to ensure that you are doing right, you know. So as part of our training at our various levels of um, um, enlistment, we ensure that the officers and men are taken through a lot of things, especially focusing on human rights, respecting the human rights of people, protecting it and protecting it. So we tell them that you need to know what human rights is about, and then you can protect the rights of people that you come into contact with. So in order for us to do this efficiently, we ensure that the training is consistent, refresher courses and all of those things. But because we are a human institution, definitely um, there will be some instances of um, arbitrariness or inconsistency or mispropriety in the performance of their duties. But it's, it's our responsibility to ensure that the right things are done. So we always encourage people to come to us, complain. Now we have so many avenues. I'll let you know where you can call to complain or where you can go to complain in the course of this discussion. I'm going to be talking about um, the two um, areas you mentioned and then um, add to it. And if at the end of it, we'll have questions and I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions because anytime the police is speaking anywhere, you definitely come across people who have encountered the police. Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. So we are ready to listen and do as much as possible to respond to them. Now, if not, I'm sure I can let Richard let you know um, responses as, as and when I, I have them. So citizens or members of the public, we are expected to be law abiding. You know, we all live in a society where we are governed or ruled by law. So we are all expected to be law abiding. Nobody is above the law. And when you come into contact with the police, definitely whatever uh, transpires is expected to be within the confines of the law. So I'll start with the first one, which was, do you know what to do if a police officer pulls you over while you are driving or stops you? And the police officer could pull you over for a number of reasons. Um, one of them could be a random stop and search, usually in the evenings or sometimes during the day, we have um, snap checks, what we call snap checks, where you have a barrier with two or three or four police officers, you know, on duty at the barrier. Sometimes they shine a torch light in your car. They want to see who is there. Sometimes they might be searching your vehicle, you know, that's a random stop and search. Or you could have a stop and search, which is based on intelligence, which has come through our control room, which is circulated for all stations to be on the lookout for something or other. And then if you are driving regularly, you could be stopped as well, because um, maybe something untoward has been noticed about your vehicle or maybe the way you are driving, you know. So you could be stopped for a number of reasons, but the ultimate thing is if you are stopped, you should stop. Sometimes people don't want to stop they tend to flee and if you don't stop, then it raises suspicion. So sometimes there'll be a pursuit or a chase and it can end bad. But if you're law abiding, you know, if, if you ask to stop, just stop. 
And um, I mentioned that you could be stopped for a number of reasons. And once we are talking about a stop, definitely somebody would ask you to produce your driver's license or any other documentation that you're expected to have if you are a vehicle owner. So for example, a driver's license or your roadworthy certificate to ensure that the vehicle you are driving is in a good condition or the insurance certificates, you know, so that if the vehicle is insured, it's important for you and for any other person within the vehicle or any other person on the road. Sometimes we get questions asked about um, if, if, if you're, you are stopped and asked to produce your license, and you don't have the license immediately, what options are available to you? So what the road traffic act says is that the policeman has that uh, prerogative to tell you to produce it within 24 hours. So he tells you that you have 24 hours to produce it. So when he tells you that you have to issue you with a notice to say that he's asked you to produce your license and you haven't produced it, so he has 24 hours, you have 24 hours to produce it. And he's expected to give you a notice to that effect. And the thing about the license is that if you are driving a vehicle, you are expected to carry your original driver's license. Sometimes people say that um, they don't have the license, they have a photocopy. And sometimes now because of technology, people say that they've taken pictures of the license on the phone, you know, so they think that, um, that should suffice, but we are working with laws, you know, so you have to do what the law says. And the law is specific that you must carry the original driver's license at all times, unless you have um, reported it missing. So if your driver's license is missing, the automatic thing you have to do is go to the nearest police station, report that is missing, you'll be given an extract. An extract is a form, you know, which says, that you reported to the police and your license is missing. And they'll give you that extract for you to take to the DVLA and the DVLA will give you a new one. So I want to mention and emphasize the fact that you can't reproduce your driver's license. So you can't take a photocopy of your driver's license or say that you've taken a picture of it. So that should be enough for the police to, to see and accept because the law is specific about reproducing licenses. You are not supposed to reproduce your license because the license document is produced only by the DVLE. So you're expected to carry your original driver's license. And sometimes people ask about roadworthy certificates and insurance certificates. The law is also specific on that. It must be displayed on the right hand corner of your windscreen you know, so that um, as and when you are stopped, it's easily accessible for the person who is checking either the police or an official from National Road Safety, because sometimes we work in conjunction with the officials from the National Road Safety or DVLA. So it must be accessible for, for us to, um, to, to, to access it and know that it's in the right condition that is up to date and it's valid and all of that. I'll move on to um, another situation that usually arises when we have a stop and search. Um, I want to mention that if you are stopped and they want to search you, I believe that you have rights, you know, so we all have rights, whether you're a civilian or a police officer and you are driving the vehicle and they want to search it. I don't think you should sit comfortably behind your wheel and allow them to search because we have reported cases of things happening while searches have gone on. So it's your vehicle, you know what is in the vehicle. Ensure that when the stop and search is going on, you should be allowed to view or observe the search process. So another issue that could arise would be maybe somebody would say, I want to film the process. You know, ideally you should be able to because you need some form of evidence to prove what you are doing. But certain people get jumpy about being filmed, you know, but um, very soon we are going to go and have a system whereby police officers are going to be equipped with body cameras. And that's going to be um, a unit which is under one of my shadows. You know, I, you mentioned I'm Director General Police Professional Standards Bureau. 
we are setting up a body cam center where um, police officers on, on the road are going to be fitted with it so that whatever action is being done is recorded and is viewed. And then we move away from, um, I did this, I didn't do this, you know, all of those stories. So very soon that system is going to be rolled out. But before we have that, a uh, vehicle owner, I believe, has a right to observe the search so that nobody does anything funny with regards to the search of your vehicle. And the message that was sent out, I, once again, I would say I'm going to be speaking to the, the messages Richard you put out. And the next one was, how long can you be held legally? So if you have been arrested by a police officer, law enforcement, there are certain um, things that have to automatically happen. You, they, you need to know the reason for your arrest. They can't just tell you they're arresting you for an unknown reason because every offense has to be um, clearly spelled out and made known to you. So you need to know the reason why you've been arrested. If it's for a particular offense, you need to know the charge. You need to be sent to uh, a designated place of um, arrest, which is a police station. So the police officer cannot be sending you to any other place if you have been arrested. So if you've been arrested and you've been sent to a police station, for example, how long can you be held legally? It's for up to 48 hours, you know? That is what the constitution mandates us to keep you for, for 48 hours, because definitely we are investigating whatever offense you are being accused of. But if the process is not able to get concluded or completed within that 48 hours, the police officer or the arresting officer is expected to take you to um, a court of competent jurisdiction for the court to properly um, remand you or have you detained by the police. So if, if the remand or the detention is not authorized by the court, then that becomes unlawful and it's something that you can use um, if, if it has to get to court. So you have to be sent to a court of competent jurisdiction for the detention to be, or the remand to be properly um, um, documented. So, if you are remanded or if you have to be granted bill, that's after you have been sent to court, you, you can be granted self-recognizance bill because probably you are satisfying certain um, conditions that the police believe that you can come back or report yourself when you are needed. Or if, if that process is not too um, com um, convincing, then you would have to have a surety. So that is somebody who is going to stand for you in the sense that if the police needs you and you're not available, then whoever stood surety for you, 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 you have to sign up for that person and then produce a person as and when, when he or she is needed. So that is that for how long you can be held legally. I also prepared some information regarding your personal safety and security. You know, we have the police available Ideally, we are in every district, in every division, every station, all around the country. But um, security is something that um, you'd have to also consider personally. So just as Richard always says, if you see something, say something. We also say that um, in as much as you have the police all the time, you would have to also help yourself in a way. So basic things like um, workmen or employees, people who come within your space, there are people who tend to sometimes commit crimes because they get too familiar with us. So we think that they are one of us and we allow things to happen. So we always advise that we have a unit that conducts background checks, a unit that conducts fingerprint, you know. So if you have employees, you have people coming within your establishment, there's no um, harm in bringing them before us to ensure that we document them in a way so that if something happens, then at least you, you know that there's some information somewhere you can fall on to help you um, um, investigate a case or assist you in getting results in whatever problem you need. So we also say that um, we should also be inquisitive enough and observant, you know, sometimes 
you are living within a neighborhood and a vehicle has been parked for more than a number of days, which is not usual. And normally, considering the societies that we live in, if you are living in a neighborhood, we all tend to almost always know each other. So if you see something on top of like a vehicle that has been parked for quite a number of days without being moved, most times we get information that people's vehicles have been snatched or stolen. And after the criminals have used the vehicle, they abandon them, you know? So sometimes we get calls like that. So we just urge people to be inquisitive, if I can use that word, or observant. And um, when you see certain things which are not usual, just inform your local police and hopefully they will take action. Another thing is about um, CCTV. We talk about CCTV being a very um, crucial tool in investigation. If you have an, a, a business or even if it's your home, if you can afford it, it helps us a lot because we have solved quite a number of crimes uh, by virtue of having access to recordings from CCTVs. So if you have the opportunity or the access to that, we also encourage you to, to, to have them installed because they serve as an extra eye for you or for us when we have to um, come into any situation. And um, I also have information about our emergency lines. Um, what I want to say is that those numbers really, really work. We've had uh, feedback from people who have used them and um, they have um, attested to the fact that they call the emergency line and within a short time, we get, they get results. So I have the numbers. I don't know if Richard, I'll pass them on to you and then you can inform the whole community like in a message form, because maybe if I mention them, I don't know if people can take it down or maybe I should just still mention them. Yeah, just if you mention it, I'll type it in the chat. So All right, so um, the one eight, maybe people are familiar, but for those who are not familiar, we have a toll free emergency number one eight five five five. One eight triple five is a toll free number, which you call and uh, it's, it, it gets answered. And then there's another toll free number, which is one nine one. It's also a number you can call. And there's another one which I use personally, is 0302-773-906. 0302-773-906. That one is a pay as you talk number, but as I said, I use it personally as soon as I call the pickup. And then the 112, which is a national emergency line, is also available for, for, for anybody who wants um, assistance. And then the Ghana Police Service has um, social media because now we are all accessible to social media. And um, our Ghana Police Service page on Facebook is verified. So it's Ghana Police Service. So the Ghana is capital G, police capital P, and service capital S. It's verified on Facebook. So if there's any complaints, you can tag us on that page and then you'll get responses. I think we're on Twitter as well. So um, I want to mention that um, policing, we always say, sometimes I think is a, it's something that we've been saying on and on, but it's something that we always have to say. It. Um, although we are trained, we expect the public or civilians to also assist us to, to police, you know. So in terms of a collaboration, it's very important. Volunteering information, it's also very important because sometimes, definitely sometimes things happen. It might not be in our presence. Things can happen in our presence, but if things don't happen in our presence, we'll need whatever information um, we would, we would require to, to handle the situation. So we talk about collaboration, we talk about volunteering information, basically to assist us to help police you. And um, I want to also add that um, by way of advice, we all live within certain communities and now we've even um, opened up policing to regions which are not part of the traditional um, 16 regions that we have. So within the police circles, 
we've opened up more regions. And the whole idea is that we, we want the police to be accessible, accessible to everybody everywhere. Because sometimes within the regions outside the capital, for example, you drive for long stretches of roads or highways, and then you don't see any police presence, you know. But now we have opened it up to other regions in terms of policing so that people can be more accessible to us. And in terms of being accessible for those of us in Accra, I'm sure we've all seen that we have um, the police visibility almost on every corner. If it's a motorbike patrols or the vehicle patrols, at least the idea that you turn a corner and then you see a policeman or woman is quite assuring, you know, so that um, you, you don't think that you are helpless. At least if there's something happening within a short possible time, somebody should be able to, to pick it up. So to add to that, I would mention that how I said earlier that we're all in the community and communities and we live within um, certain areas. So the advice is always to get to know your local police, you know, get to know them. When I say get to know your local police, if you are living in cantonments, which is GIS community, you should get to know the district commander at cantonments. You know, luckily the station is not too far from the school. I'm just using that as an example. Get to know the commander, get to know the station officer. It's good to have numbers. It's very important because we have patrol teams during the day, patrol teams during the night. So you could get the phone numbers of the team leaders. And if something happens, then there's a number you can call or somebody you can readily contact, you know. So let's not live in isolation and let's see the police as partners and um, friends. You know, we say the police is your friend. So we are trying to be friendly this time. Hopefully we'll get more people to come to us and um, get, get results as and when they need them. So I think I mentioned that um, I'll not be talking for more than 20 minutes. Um, Richard, unless there's something you think I've left out so I can speak to, if not, I think people have questions. I've seen people typing questions in there. So maybe we can do the questions and maybe the question, the responses to the questions will let me speak about other things. So I think um, we could take that now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Do Dr. Christine, should I take that off? I take it out. Um, sure, if you'd like to, please go ahead. Okay, right. Okay, so um, we, we have from ENS. Um, the question is, what happens if you dispute the search findings of a search? It's asking, what happens if you dispute the search findings of a search? Okay, so if you dispute it, meaning you are insisting that this wasn't in your vehicle, Right when 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 they searched you, I'm sure he's referring to something that I think happened recently. True or false? There was something which went viral recently, and that was because um, somebody was stopped and police officers planted something in the vehicle. Yeah. So what it yes. is is that he's confirmed that that's what he's referring to. Yes, I know. Um, what it is is that um, you you are driving your vehicle. You know what you have in your vehicle. You didn't pick any other person who, who was in the vehicle to have put that there. You know who you are. You know what you do. So it's, it's a matter of you insisting on your rights. Don't let anybody pressure you to say that this was in your vehicle. If you didn't have it, you didn't have it. So what he has to do is take you to the nearest police station. And then what will happen is that it would have to be investigated. And you still insist on your rights. That is not yours. You didn't have that in your vehicle. So now he has to prove how it all happened. So we, we, um, we currently even have a case that um, we are working on. Some people are alleged to have planted something in, in somebody's vehicle and it became a whole issue, but we are we are investigating it. So it's about rights and you knowing what you what you have, what you stand for, and insisting on it. So don't allow anybody to bully you and uh, make you do something which you are not expected to do. And that's basically is part with money, for example. You know, because if you haven't done that, 
um, why should you have to part with something for something you haven't done? And it's good for us to um, look out for certain things when you find yourself in such a situation. Now, it's, it's a policy. All of us have our uniforms, um, um, our names embossed on our uniforms, you know. So it's either your last name or your first name, but definitely your name is on the uniform. And for the junior officers, they have their numbers. So if you immediately come into contact with the police officer, the advice would be to quickly look out for certain things. And, and that's for you to be able to use as your defense if it gets to a situation where you have to prove that um, this individual came into contact with you and this is what happened. So let's be alert, let's be aware. So for example, vehicle numbers, you know, if it's a police vehicle and police motorbike, or even if it's their personal vehicle, just try and look out for something. This morning, um, there's something I'm going to work on as soon as I finish this, this meeting. Somebody had to part with money somewhere around midnight. And uh, it's something I'm going to be investigating as soon as I finish. And the good thing is that he, he has um, information regarding the vehicle that the policeman had. And another good thing is that um, he parted with money to the policeman and I don't know what happened. The policeman forgot to take his helmet. So this guy has taken the helmet. As we speak, the helmet is with him. So now my investigation is going to be quite easy. So you were issued with a helmet. What happened to it? How did it get lost? So now I have the helmet and you have to answer for it. So let's be aware of certain things and then I think it can help. Thank you. All right. Okay. So ENS, I hope this clarifies. Uh, so our second question uh, is from Atu JC, and uh, he's saying, uh, under what circumstances are the police allowed to retain your driver's license? Okay, so if, if they retain it, it's probably because um, it can be for an accident situation or any other situation that the police believe that they need to secure your presence to come to answer for, for, for whatever this uh, situation is. And as of now, our system is not automated in the sense that we don't have a device yet, which um, if let's say it's our national ID card, which has all our information or the Ghana card as we call it, you know, if you have access to that card, it gives you everything. For now, we don't have that system. I think something is being developed and I think it's going to be run on a pilot very soon. So because we don't have that system, the, the idea is that we'll need you to come back so that you can come back and answer for whatever um, inf infraction that you are being um, held for. So if, 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 if you, your license is retained, I mentioned in the beginning that they are supposed to give you like a notice, you know, they are, we are expected to receive a notice to, to show that your license has been retained and then you, you'll be coming back to answer that situation. So if you are not getting a notice for that, then that's, that's a problem because if, if they retain your license and then you move away and another police officer stops you and then you don't have your license, it can become a problem as well. So we, we retain it so that we can come back to answer whatever situation it is. And the thing about retaining licenses, I want to mention that the law is specific on that. If a police officer of the rank of inspector and above is retaining your license, that is what the law says. But if the police officer is below the rank of inspector, he does not have that power to retain your license. So for a constable, I don't know how we are going to do it, but what it means is that you would have to know, civilians would have to get to know the ranks, you know. So a constable is somebody who doesn't have any rank. So there's no, um, nothing on his, his, his uniform, his or her. So a lance corporal is also the rank after constable. That one has a one chevron. So like one, like a pick or something, if I can use that word. And then a corporal is two. So if you see anybody with on, on his sleeve, he just one is a lance corporal, two is a corporal, three is a sergeant. And then it's, an inspector is one who has it on his shoulder. So, so inspectors and above have it on their shoulders, the bars on the shoulders. And then the senior officers is either a star or eagle or something. So anybody below an inspector does not have the right to retain your license. So please, all of you listening, remember that. And it's good to know that so that if 
anybody wants to do that and he's not of that rank, and because you know it and you bring it up and you can challenge it most of the time, then they know because they themselves know. So with that, you, you don't give that to the person. Or maybe they work in teams. So maybe his team leader is somewhere on the road or close by, and almost always his team leader will be an inspector and above. So if it's his team leader who is aware of the situation, that's fine. But if he's alone by himself and he's not a rank of an inspector, he cannot, under any circumstances, take your line to. And the inspector is how many again? So the, inspector, the inspectors have bars on their shoulders. So, um, mm -hmm. so that's um, like three, three bars. Yeah. So three, okay. Yes, on your shoulder, that's three. And then the chief inspector is four. So you look out for what is on okay. the shoulder. Yes, that lets you know who, uh, who the person is, like in terms of the rank. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks a lot for, for that education. Okay, the next one is coming from Dela OS. And uh, he's, Dela is asking if the police thinks you have committed an offense and ask you to go to the police station, does the police have the right to sit in your car? Does he right to have the but right to sit, in your to sit in your car? We, we always get these um, reports that they, they sit in your car, but they don't have to sit in your car. So if you are going to the station, then let us go to the station. If he has his car behind or his motorbike, he should follow you to the station. He doesn't have to sit in your car. So, so you have to insist on that. He doesn't have to sit in your car. It's not written anywhere that he should sit in your car. So why should he sit in your car? You are not running away. I'm going to the station. Let's go to the station. So we all find our means to get to the station. OK. Thank you. Uh, the next one is coming from Dr. Rejoice. And then this is more of a suggestion. And she says, um, secondly, I suggest there should be awareness of the core rules uh, to the civilians. Sometimes it appears uh, to the MTTU, MTTD uh, police themselves uh, don't know and implement the rules. I encourage, sorry, I encountered situations where they tell us something contrary. Unfortunately, you dare not argue uh, with the police. So this is by way of, a suggestion, I, I, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Well taken. Okay. Connected to that, I was wondering if there, maybe on the Facebook page or on our website where civilians can go and familiarize themselves with some of these um, laws, is there something like that? If they're not IGIS, for instance, and don't have the privilege of meeting with you on a Saturday morning. Is there anywhere a civilian can go and verify something? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but um, okay. like I mentioned, if, if, if there's no harm in popping into a police station, introducing yourself and, and uh, our stations are open 24 hours a day, we are accessible to the public. So if you are in a dilemma or something, there's no harm in going into a station or a district commander's office and ask a question, you understand? So, because um, you need to know it's your right, you know, so it's, it's good to be aware of all of these things. Yeah. Okay, okay. that's very helpful. Yeah, very much I so. loved, I loved your um, point about, for instance, if you're doing renovations or having a lot of workers in your space to have them yeah. documented beforehand, yeah. because a lot of people, Will report, yes. you know, some kind of theft when they have workers in their space. So that's a, a helpful point yes. I hadn't thought about before. Yes. And the thing is, the good thing about that thing is, um, um, it kind of somehow puts some sense of fear in the person, like, hey, they've mm -hmm. taken my fingerprint. So even if you are thinking of doing <laughs> something, you would think twice before you do it. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we, we document all of those um, um, details that we take down and, and they really, really come up um, necessary when, as and when things, things are reported to us. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, this one is by way of a direct message um, to me. And uh, it says, um, you do not have your license and you are given a note. Does the police have the rights to impound your vehicle 
when you have 24 hours to produce your license? No, yeah, they are not supposed to impound the vehicle, but I'm sure he's saying that because he's probably experienced it or somebody he know he or she knows has experienced it because I think sometimes we have those reports as well. Like they want to impound the vehicle and probably it's not involved in an accident. So the question is, why are you impounding the vehicle? But some people would, would argue that um, if they don't impound it, then they are not sure that you're going to come back. But the thing is about the license that they need. It's not about the vehicle. There's nothing wrong with the vehicle. So why would you want to impound it? You know. And as I said, the law is clear on that. The, the policeman uh, officer, you have to give 24 hours to produce to produce that um, license. Yes. So it's not right that they are impounding vehicles for that. And we have also been warned to be clearing our stations of vehicles and all of those uh, things that keep littering our station. So as and when directives come, they are all supposed to comply. So. All right, I have another direct message. Um, it says, I witnessed the police take bribe in front of me at the airport, and he even took mobile money from the victim because the victim didn't have physical cash. Uh, I'm sure the person wants to find out whether this is right or wrong. It's definitely wrong, but this is something that my office normally investigates. So please, anybody who, who has a problem like that, um, Richard, I don't mind if my number is given for such um, cases to be reported to. So we are not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be collecting bribe. You're not supposed to be extorting. So please, anybody who observes this, if there's any possible way of taking more information for us to identify the people involved, please do that, okay? So I mentioned, let's be observant. If it's a, it's a motor number, a motorbike number, all of those vehicles and uh, motorbikes and things we have, all those numbers are issued by our transport directory. So as soon as we get the number, if I get a picture and the number immediately, we, we trace the people involved. So please, anything you notice, just let us know and then we'll, we'll deal with it. Okay, all right. So um, I would like to mention that um, we, will, we will put all the emergency numbers together and then there'll be a mail coming from the security and safety assurance department uh, to, to the GIS community. And usually I think during festive seasons, we tend to send out short, short blurbs. So probably we will use that opportunity to, to send such out. Thank you. Okay, so there's another, another direct message and it says, uh, I think it's more of a scenario. Um, I was stopped one night and informed that I had a burnt out light. As I had a spare, I offered to replace it, but the officer refused and rather took me to the station and my license seized and asked to report the next day. Any idea why this was done? That's a question. Um, so was the, was the vehicle retained as well? Oh, you, okay. can, you can't ask that question. All right. So um, whoever sends that message, if you can just respond to that, and then we'll come back to that. But there's a second question uh, that says, um, this is to the MTTD, right? Okay. Why do you, why do the police not do anything about the creation of additional lanes at the intersections or merge points? This is stressful. So they are asking the MTTD why they don't do that. Is this something that the police answers. can do or is something that um, has to do specifically with the road network? You know, because is it because they are driving in areas where there's build up? I don't know, I'm not too sure. Because if it's I, I want to believe um, usually when we do the stop, the stop blocks or the, the, the stop checks, uh, usually, the, um, they, they they try to merge every lane into one, you know, mm. with the sense that that will also control traffic and then put people in a queue. And I, I know it's always, if you go to the military barracks, for instance, you, you realize mm. that it's it's done that way to keep mm. people in the queue and then keep them uh, uh, queued up oh, in a way okay. that is strategic for them okay. to do their search. Yeah, mm. that's a vantage point. Okay. 
All right, so um, there's a third one from the same indiv individual. Uh, this is a general welfare question. Um, with the high visibility police, uh, what sanitary prov provisions are made for them? So I'm, I'm sure, uh, yes, yes. So what yeah. sanitary provisions are made for them? Um, what it is is that they run shifts. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you have uh, the police at intersections or certain parts of the road, they are not there like throughout the day. We always have shifts. So you don't see somebody at nine and he's the same person standing there at 4 p.m. So we run shifts during our, our sessions. So it's definitely um, a group of people coming at a certain time and then they change over for another group to come. So I don't know if that is the concern. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, we, we, we've witnessed um, a few like that. And um, usually what we do is that because we see the police is our friend, uh, mm -hmm. we ensure if they have to visit the loo, um, Oh, they have okay, to go okay. that's what you're talking about. Uh, so so okay. we, we usually will accommodate that and then ask okay, them to, okay, to use okay. our premises uh, for okay. that purpose. Okay. okay, so there is one more. Uh, if a police officer stops you for a random vehicle search, can they search your personal effects, for example, inside a handbag? So they should be able to allow you to open it for, for them to see what is inside, you know. The whole idea is about ensuring that um, that search is properly done and you are aware of whatever is going on. So they are not supposed to be putting their hands inside directly because what if there's something in his hand that will enter your bag? So ideally, you should be able to open it up and then say if it's open, you can look through it, but not that is opening and then, you know, even at the airport, I think they allow you to open it and then if they are searching your bags, because um, it's your bag, it's, you are responsible for everything that is in it, you know, so it, it should be, it should be, um, that, that should be the ideal situation. Okay, so we still have 10 minutes left and mm -hmm. more questions are clean in. Uh, so this one is coming from uh, Roberta Quarte, and she says, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, may I please know what to do if you are robbed during the day in traffic and reported to the nearest police and reported to the nearest police station and on your way to pick up the police, re on a police report, you saw the person at another location within the same community and informed the police officer but was told there is no other officer to arrest the person. So it's an issue of two, That's an two incidents at the same time. Situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have been assisted whichever way because um, cases are assigned to um, individuals, like certain individuals to handle. So if you are robbed, definitely would have been assigned to one person. So even if that particular person it's not available because he's attending to another case. What the commander has to do is that he has to assign you somebody else to assist you. And then if the person is arrested, then they hand him or her over to your original investigator. You know, though, so if, if that's what's happened, then that's an unfortunate situation. But the ideal situation is even if you are not handling a particular case, but you've been asked to assist, what you normally do is we assist, we arrest, and then the person is detained. So even if your original investigator is not there, investigations can start. And then when your investigator comes, he takes over. So because um, a crime has happened, the person needs to be assisted in any way. So, so if, that's, if that's what happened, that's an unfortunate situation. OK. So um, probably, is, is there anything like a first come, first served principle, or it's based on criticality and urgency of the matter at hand that um, a police officer will use his discretion to say, I will do this one before that, or, or what? Is there anything like that? Um, not necessarily, not necessarily. So the detectives are assigned cases based on, for example, we have roasters, you know, so on such and such a date, you are, you are on duty. If cases are reported, they are assigned to you. So um, sometimes you are not working on just one case, you know, so 
it's a matter of how he or she will apportion his time, his or her time, and handle the cases that have been assigned. But um, that's why we have supervisors, you have crime officers. So when you are given a case, it's not like a burden. Whatever you are handling, you should be able to let your supervisor know so that if there's any assistance, you know, then it, it is given to you. So, so all of us work under superior officers or senior officers. We don't work in isolation. So you should, if there's something happening, you should be able to know that you can go somewhere higher to report it for, for assistance. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Okay, this is coming from Eric Otu. Uh, or Eric Otu, you asked about DCOP's uh, number. We will be sharing that uh, pretty shortly. Um, so, so stand by for that. Um, there's a question from him. Uh, he says, also, I'm unable to get the road traffic amendments. That's the Act 2020 Act uh, 1054 online. Where, where can we get it online? Okay, I don't know about online, but for physically, um, most of the laws and acts are sold at the assembly press in Accra. So that's where we usually buy our, um, if it's Constitution, Act 30, Act 29, Road Traffic Act, Children's Act, all of the laws are sold at the assembly press in Accra. I think it's around uh, former Nobotel Hotel, that area. So laws, acts are also there. I think that's the official government uh, institution that sells um, the laws, our acts of parliament. So if you go there, you should be able to get it. Okay, great one. Okay, this is also a direct message coming through, uh, which is a question. Uh, with a vehicle accident, if the parties agree to repair the vehicles, why do the police still insist on impounding the vehicles? You see, I'm smiling <laughs> yeah, because it happens. You think you understand each other. You want you you want to do it on your own. Most of the time, it ends up not like what you think. So I always advise people always get the police involved because sometimes the person will say, "Okay, I'm going to repair it," and the the cost becomes something else. So then it becomes an issue between the two of them. So if you get the police involved, it's always important to sort of act like a, a check or a guarantee that definitely if you get it done, you say you get it done, you get it done. So some, something like a witness in the whole situation. And usually maybe you think it's minor, so you can do it, but road accidents or accidents involving vehicles, by law, you are supposed to report to the police. So you should be doing that. But if you think you want to do it on your own, I always advise that get the police involved. Okay, great. And I think um, there is a response to um, the fact that you were asking whether the vehicle was uh, retained or not. I think there was a question earlier on, if I can just go to that quickly. The light is light. The light, yes. I was stopped one night and informed that I had a burnt out light, yes. Yes. Yeah. So right. probably. So I was what asking if the vehicle was the vehicle was re like um, kept at the station. No, uh, and I think he's he's answering that it wasn't. Yes. It was. It's okay. 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 And uh, the merge, the issue about the merge points, uh, he, he's given an example here. Example, um, the left turn lights in front of the GPS, uh, GNFS uh, headquarters. Okay. So I think he's talking about the, uh, the fire service uh, headquarters. Yes, I know that area. Like, yes. Yeah. So that's where that merge point. So I think there was a road check um, being uh, conducted at that location. Okay, so um, there is one from Icha, Ichia. We have four minutes more. I usually encounter solicitation for money at the police stop mounted on the Spintex Road between the traffic lights leading to the East Legon Tunnel and Palace Shopping Mall at, at night. Once I was seen, once I was even asking, I was even asked to send Momo 
Okay, I think we had that. If I had, I didn't have cash. Can that police stop be checked, please? It ends up creating more traffic at the traffic lights intersection. Okay. So maybe we we, we need so, to. So, um, I want I want that person to send me um, a direct message. So um, we would use that information as part of our monitoring and intelligence okay. gathering. Yeah, okay. So I want I'll, a direct message on that so that I know the specific areas. Okay, so we will we'll facilitate that and yeah, mm -hmm. get it sorted out. Okay, so there's a question here. Does the law allow police cars and motorcycles drive against traffic, uh, especially when they are not using their sirens and flashing lights? No, so the law does not allow anybody to drive against traffic. I'm sure we've all observed that now there's a, a new system whereby everybody's expected to stay in traffic. And within Accra, there are certain teams, enforcement teams that have arrested people who have been driving against traffic, or driving on the shoulders, and they've been sent to court, even including police officers, military officers, and even other high ranking people, MPs and things like that. So. Nobody's supposed to be driving against traffic unless, unless, unless it's a real emergency that they are responding to, you know. For example, there's a robbery in progress or something like that. But uh, that, was, that would be a subject of um, investigation. But um, if, if, if it's not for an emergency, we are all supposed to drive as normal drivers. And the interesting thing is that we are always reminded about that. Even last week, the, as part of our um, dissemination of messages for all personnel, there's a message from the police administration about police officers complying with traffic rules and regulations. So we are all not supposed to, to do that. Sure. Thank you. All right. Um, there's one that says, um, what can one do if you are defrauded by an online vendor? Okay, so we have um, a police intelligence department that handles our, um, and then a cyber crime unit at the CID headquarters that handles issues to do with um, cyber crime or cyber related um, criminal activities. So this is good for, for you to know that um, if, if you have such a situation, don't think that is helpless, okay? Our cyber crime units is well equipped and they are doing quite a marvelous job to the extent that even if there's, a, there's an issue about messages that have been circulated and we are trying to trace who originated it, who circulated it, we are able to do that. So there's a cyber crime unit at the police headquarters, sorry, at the CID headquarters that handles such, such cases. So you should take advantage of that. Right, thanks a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's 10 o'clock. Um, I don't know whether maybe we could take all these other questions and then channel it through to you uh, so that you can respond to them later. I don't know whether you have enough time uh, because you mentioned that you had to be at an, another event um, by 10. So um, can we do five minutes? I five don't minutes know. More. Okay. All right. So um, the question is, what's the procedure to request for a police officer when having a private event to maintain security? Um, <laughs> that's a tricky one because um, we are not supposed to be doing private stuff like that. But if based on whatever event you're holding, you believe that the presence of the police will be good to ensure safety and security, you can always call on your local police. So I mentioned in the beginning that get to know your local police because maybe the event you're holding can cause obstruction by way of traffic for other road users because vehicles will be coming and things like that. So just call on your local police and if they are able to, they will always assist. Okay, all right, so we'll take one more. Yeah, someone very close to me was robbed. And when he took the evidences to, when he took the evidence to the police, he was told that it will be investigated. But up till now, there has been no follow-up and the police even took money for the investigation. And uh, this was in Ashaiman municipality. Okay. So this particular one, Richard, you can give my number for us to, 
to, to speak further, okay? okay? Because it's something that I should be able to look into. Okay, uh, so um, I'll advise that the technical team at the back end, um, let's, let's ensure that we keep the chats, um, the, the, the chats uh, trail so that we are able to, to address all these questions uh, uh, later after, after the event. Okay, which police station do you have to produce your license? I'm trying to get this quite, uh, which police station do you have to produce your license? Uh, probably maybe it's a follow-up question to another. Let's uh, we can see. Because yeah, if you are it's, driving, I think you mentioned the local, so that means whichever police station yeah. is within that local jurisdiction. Yeah. And whoever has stopped stopped you and asked for your license should be the one that you should be sending your license to. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, he's, 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 there's an example. Uh, Example from Tamale to Accra, you are stopped in Kumasi, but you have you live in Accra. Do you have to send the license to Kumasi? So um, that's a tricky yeah. one because I'm just wondering if you don't have any business back there, why would you have to drive all the way back um, to to produce your license? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So. That's it. Okay, we have another one. Um, good morning, sir. Please, um, I would also like uh, the COP's number. Um, I have to leave now. How can I get it? So we will reach out to you. Um, the name is, I think it's a Doris. Okay, so we will we'll reach out uh, to you. Okay. Okay. All right. So location of Assembly Press is opposite Accra City Hotel on Vans okay. Road. Okay, the creation of additional lane is the normal situation at the at the at the lights in front of the GNFS uh, GPS headquarters. So that's the same location we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So okay, okay, okay. So it's all about great, great, great. Uh, do you have a safe emergency line for children to report suspected abuse? We don't have a separate line per se, but we have the domestic violence offices in most of our regions. So if um, you can access them, that would be good. But Richard, I, I have to give you some other numbers, which I don't have now. But those numbers are numbers within my department. We have a public complaint call center. I'll mm. get that one for you so you can add it to um, your messages that you Number circulate. Of numbers yes. sent out. So, so, so this office is, with, is within my, my department and it's a number that you can call. So um, this question about the emergency line for children to report abuse, you can take advantage of that number because that number is run during the day. You know, we haven't started for nights yet, but for night you have those emergency numbers. But during the day, this one comes directly to my office. So Richard, I'll get you those numbers later to add to, to, to your message. So the, there's one number for calls, and then there's another number. So when you call somebody that did the complaint, they take it down with all the information you have. And we pass it to the appropriate, pass it on to the appropriate um, department to handle. And then there's another number for um, WhatsApp, videos you can send videos and then that's only via whatsapp so should have gotten it for you i'm sorry but um, I'll, I'll definitely get them for you so that you can circulate for for the gis community i remember some time back during the festive season uh, some of these numbers were shared i think with the with the staff community we need to mm -hmm. extend it out to, to yes, parents yes, as well I, think when I, came, I came with some stickers right yes the, exactly the stickers and they had the numbers on it so, yes. so we we'll probably have to get get you some more of that. Okay. Yes. So I'll get you these numbers for the public complaints call center, and we get calls from all over the country, all mm. over the country on those numbers. Yes, I'll I'll, right. I'll get them for you. Yeah. Okay. All right. At this juncture, um, let me, on behalf of um, GIS management and the entire GIS community. Uh, we say a big thank you uh, for the insightful talk. Uh, it's been very, very informative. It's been very, very educative.
uh, and to the GIS community. Uh, I also appreciate your presence. I missed your very, very busy schedules. So until then, um, let's all stay safe. As we approach the festive, another festive season, which is Easter, uh, we want you to stay safe. And if you see something, say something. Thank you. Thank you very much.